Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to this, the start of our third series of Doha Debates sponsored by the Qatar Foundation. Over the summer, southern Lebanon and northern Israel became the world's latest war zone. Lebanon suffered by far the heaviest casualties, counting its dead in the hundreds with hundreds of thousands displaced from their homes and thousands of those homes destroyed. For more than a month, Israeli forces battled with Hezbollah fighters. But who asked Hezbollah to fight for Lebanon? And are they saviors, as many in the Arab world believe, or terrorists, as labeled by the West? Well, our motion tonight goes to the heart of the issue. This House believes that Hezbollah had no right to fight a war on Lebanon's behalf. Speaking for the motion, Osama Safa, who is General Director of the Lebanese Center for Policy Studies, a think tank based in Beirut. He's also a founding member of the Lebanon Conflict Resolution Network and has been active in helping to develop civil society programs. With him, Hisham Kassam, Vice Chairman and CEO of Al Mazri Al Yom, the first independent daily newspaper in Egypt since 1954. He's chairman of the Egyptian Organization for Human Rights and Vice President of Foreign Affairs for the Al Ghad Party. Against the motion, Mona Makram Abey, the former member of the Egyptian Parliament, now Professor of Political Science at the American University in Cairo. She also lectures in politics and the Middle East Diplomatic Institute at the Foreign Ministry. With her is Ibrahim Al Musawi, head of political programs at Hezbollah's Al Mana TV in Lebanon. He's been both a teacher and a journalist and has lectured widely in Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, our panel. Now let me please ask Osama Safa to speak first for the motion. Thank you, Tim. Uh, I am for the motion, absolutely I am for the motion, because, well, for several reasons. First, this has brought over us dire consequences. I am coming today from a fractured country, really, literally a fractured country, that was barely back on its feet after 16 years of post-war recovery, and now we're back to square one. This has been a major factor of instability for us. This is extremely unsettling for me and for millions of other Lebanese really to, to be able to see military surprises, to be able to be caught off guard as we were on July 12th. We were caught off guard with a military operation that we absolutely had nothing to do with, that has brought on us really crippling consequences. The Lebanese are tired of war. The Lebanese are tired of any military surprise. I also support this motion, Tim, because I think what has happened has proved any military decision outside state legitimacy is absolutely ineffective. It brings no deterrence, it brings no protection, it only brings havoc and destruction. I do come from South Lebanon myself, and I have lived throughout all the Israeli wars on Lebanon. I have never seen so much mayhem and so much destruction. Villages on end are in ruin. In clear conscience, I cannot but support this motion. This has been an extremely tragic situation. There is so much uh, rebuilding to redo, unfortunately redo, we were on a fast track towards recovery and then we were rudely interrupted, millions of lives have been interrupted. You ask the Lebanese on the street today, are you better off than you were on July 12th? The question is definitely no. I think I would really like to uh, leave the audience with a couple of sobering questions. We are faced with two choices. Does Lebanon have to be, have to continue to be, a fortress of resistance, a fortress of fighting that will only bring havoc and destruction, that will keep it poor, will keep it disintegrated, or will Lebanon, should Lebanon be a liberal, open, and diversely, and a culture diverse country and a pluralist country? Do the Lebanese have the right to dream? Do the Lebanese have the right to have ambitions, to have future goals? without these goals being interrupted? Why should the Lebanese live in Qatar or elsewhere in any other country except in Lebanon? Why should they feel so disconnected from Lebanon as this latest war has let them feel? All of these are really major questions that right now we're trying to grapple with. Osama Safa, thank you very much. The blame for this bleak picture that you've painted of your home country, you lay at the door of Hezbollah. It's not just a question of blame. I mean, but you say they had no right. You support that motion that they had no right to fight a war on Lebanon's behalf. Absolutely. And you were taken off guard. Yes, we were totally taken off guard. You knew that they were by building up their stockpile of weapons for years. They were, you? they were at the same time part of a national dialogue. But national you knew the weapons were dialogue. being built up. The weapons were there. We were 
the state, what did you think they were for? The state of Lebanon is weak enough to not be able to do anything about it. They were trying to address this through a dialogue, through a national political dialogue that looked as if it was going well, as if it was going somewhere, and then suddenly there was some secretive planning, there was some planning with absolutely no consultation with anyone, and we were found in this situation. But did they renounce their core belief that Israel had to be liquidated? They never did, did they? They kept building up their weapons. You knew that the weapons were not for decoration. The weapons would one day be used. You had to know this. Absolutely. And you and the rest of Lebanon acquiesced in it. The dream was these weapons could be put into a defense strategy for the good of Lebanon. But it's a bit late to cry about Hezbollah actions now. Where were the anti-Hezbollah demonstrations in Lebanon? There weren't any, were there? Where were the protests about the build-up of weapons? There weren't any. It is not an anti-Hezbollah demonstration. There were efforts to bring in Hezbollah as a full political actor. It is a legitimate political actor, but its military wing has been into question, has been on the table as something to be discussed, as something to be negotiated. And it seemed like the negotiations were serious over this, but then suddenly uh, this has happened, has really destroyed any trust that has been built so far with uh, the party, with Hezbollah, between right. the government and the party. Osama Safa, thank you very much indeed. Now let me please call on Mona Makram Abed to speak against the motion. I am certainly against this motion for the following reasons. First of all, fighting a resistance war to liberate one's occupied land is legal according to international law. What Hezbollah has done is a reaction to decades of Israeli violations of human rights, of UN resolutions, and of assault and occupation. Hezbollah is not only an armed resistance movement, but it is also a political movement with two ministers in government, with the largest constituency in parliament, and it has a grassroots organization that nobody can uh, rival today. It has informed the government at a ministerial meeting last year that it was serious about the prisoner's release. This was not a, uh, it was not hidden from anywhere. It is not the first time that Israeli soldiers have been captured. Both Israel and Hezbollah had negotiations in the past, as recently as the year 2004. Hezbollah has been pressing the issue of Lebanese prisoners in Israeli jails, along with Lebanon's claim to the Israeli-occupied Sheba farms. Both these claims were supported by the Lebanese government. Furthermore, this is not only a Lebanese issue, but it is a regional issue. Hezbollah was not acting only on Lebanon's behalf, but its influence has grown to become a symbol of resistance and awakening in the Arab and Islamic world. Arab governments such as Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, which started to blame Hezbollah for creating the crisis that led to war, had to shift their position in the wake of public anger in their countries about the Israeli bombing. And even as it faces criticism in Lebanon, Hezbollah has gained millions of supporters in the Middle East. People in the region have compared its steadfastness with the swift defeat of three large Arab armies in the Six-Day War in 1967. Nasrallah has become a household name in my own country, Egypt, where Hezbollah's action 